Hello everybody, Realm Builder Guy here, and welcome back to another Crusader Kings 3 guide. Now, um, before I get into the guide, thank you again for everyone that's been liking, commenting, subscribing. We just cracked a thousand subs here on the channel. Thank you so, so much. So, I have decided to go with, I'm going to call this like a mini guide. So before that, I've before this one, I've talked a lot about large geographic uh, areas or countries or stuff like that. Now I want to kind of go dive a little bit mini. Uh, it's been requested to get into India a little bit. And I first thought about doing a big India um, kind of guide. But the problem there is there's so much to cover. And it would just take hours and hours of time, not just to make it, but in terms of the video would just be really long. So instead, I'm going to dissect India bit by bit. And I'm going to start with one that um, has been requested, actually, and is one that's very, very interesting. We're going to start here in Chola. And we start in 867, then I'm going to jump forward to 1066. And the reason why 867 is so interesting is because the person in charge here of chola uh and again i apologize for mispronunciations raja vikayalaya is actually the founder of imperial of the imperial chola empire um and i'll get into him in a minute but in general let's talk about chola now chola is one of the longest running dynasties ever in world history uh first records indicated in the year 300 bce until 1279 ce or ad whichever one you you want to use there uh so that's 1600 years of recorded history of them existing as an empire a kingdom a small unity unit that then eventually became a massive empire now they are tamil they are also what is called a thalatocracy. Now, a thalatocracy is a maritime power, and I'll get into what maritime power came out of Chola here in a second. Now, they rise to the true Cholan Empire really began in the 9th century, even though they had already been around essentially for, oh, over a thousand years at that point. It's here in the 9th century with Vikayalaya that it really became the Chola Empire. Now, as I mentioned, they were a seaborn empire. Now, they're not seaborn in the sense of they started on an island and conquered the mainland. They were on the mainland, but expanded and had a powerful fleet that was kind of one of their big, I guess, military and diplomatic and trade strategies to get power. Now, they got power and influence over all of southern India. Their power and influence also extended from the Maldives, which are down here. They conquered those, conquered Sri Lanka, and also places in Indonesia and Malaysia. Uh, so in, in the north until right around here, roughly, and they had a few conflicts with the Palas. So right in this area. So all of this southern India eventually was under the control of the Chola dynasty. They also had strong diplomatic ties with China, which obviously if they're going to be in Malaysia and so on, that kind of makes sense because you're going to butt up to Chinese interests. So they had diplomatic relations and trade and emissaries in China and a constant back and forth. Their extension out here also led to the King of Burma becoming involved and in trying to undermine the Cholas. Now the Cholas finally came to an end in the year 1279, or let's just say sometime in the later 13th century, because the Pandya dynasty, which you can see right here, here are the Pandyans, uh, took over and overthrew them, even though for a while Chola controlled the Pandyan lands. Now, Vikala, oh, I'm going to say this, Vikalayaya, Vik, Vikala, Vik, him, <laughs> Vikayalaya, there we go, finally got it down again. So, again, he was the founder of the Imperial Chola Empire. And the reason, the way it came to be is because you had here Pallava and down here Pandya constantly at war with one another. And Vic over here, I'm not going to try to say that name again, but Vic kind of used that 
conflict to slowly but surely under the radar build his own power and then at, from this power base kind of conquered his neighbors he moved up north first before trying to take on uh, Pandya now what would be the strategy for Chola now you're taking this over now down here you have Sri Lanka essentially and they are inferior to you but you have to go through Pandya to get there now you have your neighbors here in Penugonda. These are ones you could take over pretty quickly. What I would try to do, if you're Chola, you're 40 years old, you have one child who is unmarried, and you could still get married. Duchy realm title. This is a kingdom tier. So marriage will be hard, but if you can somehow get into the good graces of Rashtrakuta, uh, that would give you a powerful ally. Otherwise, maybe go over here to Chera or Vengi Chalukya to the north to kind of pin in your enemies. Uh, I would definitely gobble up these guys first. They are inferior to you. Add those numbers to you, and you're starting to get to the pl place where you could take on Pandya. Maybe an alliance with the Cheras makes the most sense. If you're going to go with a southern route strategy, a northern strategy, Vengi may not be a bad one either, but Chera, there is a child, though he's a male. You'll have to find a female uh, to, to marry. You could marry your neighbor here, but yeah, I'd try to steer clear of that if that's who you want to take over. Unless you say, hey, we want to take over Pandya, then your options are a little bit bigger. You can also look at within your neighbor's realm if there are people there you could ally with. Uh, maybe take out Pandya and then Chera and then take over Sri Lanka and start slowly building your southern base before you move north and then take on Rashtra Kuta. So that is the 867 start for Chola. Now let's jump forward in time 200 years to the year 1066. So welcome to 1066 and Maharaja Mirarasentira of the Chola Kingdom. As you can see, you're already a kingdom tier. Now you do have claims down here in Sri Lanka that we'll get into in a second, where you are also currently at war. Let me get rid of that. Now he's not overly impressive and these numbers have changed a few times. So none of this is uh, set in stone. All of this can and will change with both. Now, also not married, 56 years old. You may want to change that, but already has a few kids. Um, daughter married, Son, not yet married, so that's one way you can play that game. But before we get into the game mechanics of Vara, we're going to talk about Vara the real person. Now, he came in during the one of the more aggressive expansion eras of the Chola Empire, and it's because his two elder brothers both died. He took over uh, right around this time, and he was already 56 years old. He only ruled until 1070, so it was a very short short rule but one that was pretty important for chola now amongst them was a constant f battle with the chalukians both to the west and vengi chalukia internally now the pandians were also pushing but the chalukians were really the ones that were the major thorn in chola's side so when this guy here, Somasvara, finally died and his son took over uh, the king or the Maharaja of Chola, formed an alliance there and kind of ended that war. His main focus was expansion beyond mainland India. So he did conquer the rest of Sri Lanka eventually and also conquered territories uh, in Malaysia and Indonesia. Um, he died in 1070, but in that short period of time, so it's only four years from now, he managed to control all of Southern India as well as a bunch of islands. So what's going on with Vera at this time? Well, you've got a war down here against Sri Lanka. And as you can see, 5,000, 4,300 special soldiers, you have 1,600. That's formidable. Now, there is historical accuracy in this and that the king of Burma, now remember I mentioned just when we were in 867, the king of Burma tried to undermine the expansion of Chola. Now, he actually sent troops to, to the rebels in Sri Lanka to try to undermine Chola. So that's, I can't, couldn't see exactly where the special troops are from, but 
Odds are these are Burmese. Nice thing about special troops is once they're dead, they're gone. You're not going to get them back. So that's your key there. Because if you look at their actual strength, it's only 700. Somebody you should be able to beat. Now, your son can marry. You may want to look at Chalukya as as an ally, even though they only have sons, but somewhat internally. Or you move abroad and look for somewhere, uh, anybody really that you can ally with outside of here that is of your of your strength and power. It's going to be a little bit harder as we see. Uh, most everybody seems, at least in this loading of the game, to have male heirs. So that's going to be a little bit more difficult. But your first thing is you gotta you got to get rid of those rebels. And maybe part of the gig is building up enough money that you can hire some mercenaries to start matching their power. Because those Burmese soldiers, assuming that they are Burmese, are going to be a major thorn in your side. But once you've subjugated them... There's nothing to say you can't move up north and try to take over more and more of India along the way before eventually you take on the Chalukians. Because right now, militarily, they are significantly more powerful than you are. So that's something that you have to keep in mind. Pala is also a constant thorn in the side historically. So after Sri Lanka, I would look at some of these smaller states before you take on, you know, some of these bigger military powers. And again, an alliance is a key thing there. So you want to get your son married away to form an alliance, bring in a spouse, produce a few more heirs before you croak, so you can expand Chola that way. So this is a significantly shorter guide because I only focused on one entity. Please let me know in the comments below if, if you like this, if you like... Shorter videos that only focus on one entity, giving you some historical context there, some possible strategies and starts in both start dates. Or if you like something more sweeping and larger. Now, I do have a few larger guides still planned, but let me know in the comments what you think. Shorter ones, appropriate. Do you enjoy them or do you like the bigger, longer ones? So please let that leave that down in the comments. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe if you're new to not miss anything on the channel, including streams and new games. Um, there is a link down in the description to a poll where you can also help me choose what types of games to feature on the channel moving forward, in addition to Crusader Kings 3. So until next time, I'm Realm Builder Guy, and I'll talk to you soon.